All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, you might be quite familiar with the car sitting behind me. It's my 2004 Volvo XC70 that I bought a few months ago for just £750. I've since spent thousands on it, but let's not dwell on that. If you watched the first video I did with this, you'll know that it's done 294,000 miles, and I'd quite like to get it to the big 3.0. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. And you know what that means, don't you? It's road trip time. Now, because this is the XC, the cross-country, the all-wheel drive version, it's quite capable off-road. It was designed for harsh Scandinavian winters. And I've since fitted it with some Michelin cross-climate tyres, so it should be able to cope with anything. So my plan was to take it to the highest town in Europe. Nope, not Amsterdam. Davos. Davos is an alpine resort town in Switzerland. It sits 1,560 metres above sea level, so it'll be the perfect test for the old Volvo. I want to see how this performs in the Swiss Alps. And I've checked the weather forecast, and it's going to be minus 12 there this weekend, so I'll be quite grateful of those heated seats. I am quite prepared on this occasion. I'm not usually very organised, but on this occasion I have tried. So, have a look what I've got in the boots. I've got all the ingredients for a road trip. We have got two triangles, two high visibility jackets, a UK sticker, and what else? Oh, yeah, the all important headlamp things. These little stickers go on your headlamps to change the direction of your light so you don't blind oncoming traffic, because of course we drive on the correct side of the road here in the UK, and those foreigners in Europe do not. There is one little thing that I need to do. You all thought I was going to throw that on the floor, didn't you? Let's try and get this level, shall we? No air bubbles, there we go. Look at that. Perfect. Right, well, I'm going to go home and get packed, and I'll see you in Folkestone. Cheers, guys. Morning guys. Right, well we're down in Folkestone at the Eurotunnel Terminal. I've just got here now. I was hoping to get on an earlier train, but no such luck. So I've got about an hour and a half to wait. I set off this morning about 4.30 and I've done, let me tell you, 287 miles. And so far it's been really good on fuel. I've averaged, turn that off. I've averaged 47.1 miles per gallon, which isn't bad for a 300,000 mile old car like this, is it? I just topped at the tank at Maidstone Station, it took about 26 litres, so quite good on fuel really. When I get off the train at the other side and get to France, I've got about five and a half hours to the hotel. I've already booked the hotel. It is a Ebis again. I don't think it's an Ebis Styles, I think it's an Ebis Budget. I think all the styles in the area were, uh, were fully booked. But it's in a place called, now forgive me here because I might be getting this wrong, I think it's, well it's, it's written Nancy but I don't know how you pronounce it. I should be quite grateful that I'm heading to Nancy and not heading out west to a place called Nantes. Any minute now I'm expecting to see an old clapped out one series. At Maidstone Station there was a, a right hand drive on Romanian plates one series that sounded, it sounded terrible. I think it overheated. It was all being pushed into the station by five lads. I'm half expecting to see them pushing it along now like some sort of bobsleigh. But so far the car has been, I don't want to jinx this now, but it's been spot on. There's been no warning lights, no judders, no flutters. It has just been, well, like a modern car, really. I filled up the car yesterday in Stockport before I left, and it took, it was empty to be fair, but it took £102, but that was, that was V-Power, Shell V-Power diesel. I think the £102 bought me about 60 litres. I expected it to have a bigger tank than that, but it says, well, it says on the range anyway, that I've got something like 975 miles from a tank. So quite impressive, quite a good Grand Tourer. Very noisy seagulls here. It makes you wonder really, doesn't it? Considering this is 20 years old and done nearly 300,000 miles, I don't think it's lost any of its fuel efficiency. You'd have thought it would have done, wouldn't you? But I don't think it has. Doing this kind of run crossing continents, I think is what this car was built to do. And so far it's proved to be a bit of a trooper. I picked up my pal this morning at about half four and he's just inside the terminal and he's a bit camera shy, so he doesn't want to feature. But it has been a lot better having some company. Last time I did this in the Panda, I was just on my own. Although one thing I'm quite disappointed about, I brought all these CDs with me. These, uh, I've collected these over the years from various parts exchanges, and I've got some belters. 
I was looking forward to listening to them. I've got, for example, 80s anthems, Lionel Richie, Truly the Love Songs, Blondie, but my CD player doesn't work. Gutted. So now all I've got here really is a load of rearview mirror decorations. Unfortunately, it does still have a whiff about it. I sprayed it, I doused it last night in Febreze, and I found this new air freshener, so I put that in it, hoping that it would smell a little bit fresher. And it hasn't really worked. I'm hoping, some more hours spent in it, it should be okay. I crossed the QE2 bridge this morning, and I've already paid my dart charge. I forgot to do that in the Panda, and I got a £70 fine, or whatever it was. So I've remembered to do that this time. And yeah, I think that's about it. So I shall see you a little bit later on. After looking around the duty free, I realised I didn't need a giant Toblerone or a teddy bear dressed as a beef eater, so I decided to board instead. Well, we're on the Eurotunnel now, and it is quite rocky actually. Don't remember it being this rocky usually. My mate got me paranoid about the lack of Campbell history on this car, so I've just called the garage and crew, who are the last people to service the car back at 220,000 miles, and he was really helpful. So he called me back maybe 20 minutes later, and he said, I've got pages and pages and pages of extra history for this car, so I've printed it off for you, so next time you pass it, just call in and pick it up. So I said, do you know if it's ever had its cam belt done? And he was busy, eh? the phone was ringing in the background, I didn't want to bother him too much. But he said, yeah, yeah, we did a cam belt on it. So I thought, right, well, that's good enough for me then. Before we get to France, I just want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Car Vertical. If you're looking to buy a used car or motorcycle, it's crucial that you check out its history. Let me show you how it works. So let's take the old Volvo. Foxtrot Hotel 54 Yankee Foxtrot Alpha. You just type in its reg and then check vehicle. You might think this is expensive to check the history on a used car, but wait until you buy a car without checking its history first and it turns out to be a lemon. Then you'll know what expensive is. And also, if you use the promo code HIP, you'll get 10% off. I'll leave the link below in the video description, but if you pop in the promo code HIP, you won't forget that, you will get 10% off. And here's the report for my old Volvo. So there's no evidence of any mileage fraud, it's never been stolen, never been involved in any recorded accidents, and there's no outstanding finance, so we're all clear on all four fronts. In addition to that, you've got all the previous MOT history, but in addition to that, it tells you how many owners it's had, and when the ownership changed. It's had quite a lot of advisor items, this old girl. Doesn't have any at the moment though, because I spent lots and lots of money on it, there you go. Pass with no advisor items. It's also telling me that it's never been used as a driving school car, police car, public transport, rental car, taxi, all that sort of stuff. What's good about car vertical is that it isn't just a UK thing, it checks millions of cars in dozens of countries, so it is very thorough. As you can see here, the mileage is fairly consistent, consistently high. There's no damage report in all those countries. Uh, let's go down to the spec, okay. We know that it's an all-wheel drive manual. Now oh, this is handy, it's a checklist of common issues, so when you go to look at a used car, you just got a bit of a heads up. So there we are, thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring another video. Let's get to France. Get to France. Now as you can see, when we get to France, we've got almost 6 hours of driving. 5 hours 40 minutes. Bear in mind I've already driven for 5 hours this morning. We were taking the A26, I've got my little toll road bipper thing with me, so that's not a problem. We will be going around, I'm not even going to pronounce that, and then heading over to, I really don't think the French pronounce it Nancy. Anyway, Nancy. Nancy? No, I can't say it. I think actually, there we go, I'm staying somewhere around here, in a place called Lax, don't know, Laxu? Don't know. Right guys, quick update for you. We're about 20 minutes from the hotel on the outskirts of Nancy. I know I'm butchering that pronunciation, but I don't know how you say it. I've been driving now for about four days. I'm bored of it. But the car hasn't put a foot wrong. It's been absolutely, I hate to say this because I'll jinx it, but it's been absolutely faultless. The plan for tonight then, once I've checked in, is maybe have a quick shower, change, and then head into, head into Nancy because I'm starving. Fancy a Chinese, really. Maybe a few beers. So that's the plan. And then, good night's sleep, and back at it tomorrow. I can't believe I've not got a single warning light on. My temp gauge is right in the middle, my fuel gauge is right in the middle. I've used another 25 litres or so. But I've been averaging, if I do the, let me work it out, a little trip computer, 49.2 miles per gallon. So, not as impressive as a little Panther, but impressive for a 300,000 mile Volvo, isn't it? One which weighs as much as this, anyway. The weather's taken a bit of a turn for the worse, so this is like being back in Stockport. It was quite nice for a couple of hours, even had my sunglasses on, but now it is very Mancunian. 
So I think that's about it. I'll catch up with you later on. Cheers, guys. Right, well, I've just checked into the hotel in Nancy, and it's an Ibis budget, but it's all right, really. I think it was only 58 euros for the night or something, so I can't complain. Let me give you a quick tour. Uh, that's it. <laughs> so you've got a double bed. My pal's in the uh, neighbouring room, actually, and his room is identical with the opposite layout. Um, shower room here. That's all you need, isn't it? Joking about for this sort of money, it really isn't bad. There's my wardrobe, some scaffolding pole, television, little dressing table, and a view there of, what can we see, a Novotel. So yeah, that's about it. I shall see you in the morning. Good night. Morning guys. Right, well we're back on the road again. I've been on the road for about an hour now. We're about, I think we're about 40 minutes from the Swiss border. It's quite a nice day. It's down to about two degrees. All range of us ball. That's nice. We went for a Chinese last night in Nancy, which was, Nancy's quite a nice place actually. I'd never, sound quite ignorant now, but I'd never even heard of it. But it's a really nice city. We had a walk through the main square, had a few beers. Had quite a nice night, really. I didn't sleep very well, to be fair, but I've had a nice hot shower, so I do feel quite fresh. I'm quite excited to be in Switzerland for the first time. We're heading now to the outskirts of Zurich, where my pal has found a shooting range. He wants to go and do that. I'm not really that bothered, but I'll try it because I've never done it. So that's where we're heading next. We just stopped at a petrol station for a coffee and a croissant. And usually anywhere in France, you can guarantee a pretty good pan au chocolat. But this one, I think, was about a week old. Does anyone know the French? Well, I think I need a filling. It was like two in a house brick. Anyway, I shall try and find another one. In other news, the Volvo still stinks. It started on the Kilo this morning, which I was quite pleased with. And it is running like a dream. But yeah, oh. it stinks. Oh. Need to WD-40 that door and find some Febreze. Well, we've just stopped for a coffee and a fresh croissant, one that wasn't like eating a house brick. And I think I've solved the issue with the bad smell. Right, well, I'm about 30 minutes away from the hotel and my fuel light is just pinged on. So I'm gonna brim the tank. I don't know how much diesel is here. I expect it's expensive like everything. And that should be, uh, hmm. I was going to say it should be my last fill up, but I'm not exactly sure. So yeah, see you at the hotel. Right guys, well I've just checked into the hotel on the outskirts of Davos, and let me give you a quick tour. Well, here is the room on the outskirts of Davos. This was 150 pounds a night. It's quite basic, but clean. It's about 20 minutes from Davos, in a place called Shears. Not the prettiest, but it's all right. It's sort of like going into a hotel room in the, in the 90s, really. Right, we're on the final ascent to Davos. We're seven minutes away according to my sat nav, and the scenery has definitely changed. It is like a winter scene, it's like being in Lapland. Well, I've never been. It's how I imagine Lapland. The original plan was to stay in Davos tonight. I've actually already booked and checked into the hotel, but I was chatting with my pal, he's never been to Italy. And seeing as we're only two hours away from Como, I thought we could just keep driving and go check out Lake Como. So that's the new plan. Spoiler alert, it made it there too. The old Volvo just hasn't put a foot wrong. I can't quite believe it. For a 19-year-old car that's done 300,000 miles, there hasn't been a warning light, or oh, we've dropped to zero degrees. There hasn't been a single warning light, a judder, a blip, nothing at all. The whole purpose of this trip was to take this 750 pound old Volvo from Manchester to the highest town in Europe, Davos, which it's done. It honestly hasn't missed a beat. It's done 300,000 miles and it just keeps plodding on. It kind of proves my theory that with the correct maintenance, any old car should last a very long time. And it's far better for the environment than buying a brand new EV. That's my theory anyway. The most carbon heavy part of a car's life is when it's manufactured. So it's just far better to keep it on the road for as long as you possibly can. 
That's what I always preach anyway, and I'm a true believer in that. That's another reason for wanting to go to Davos, because Davos is where all the world's leaders meet every year to talk about climate change. They all fly in on the private jets with their entourage, and they discuss how we should all try and lower our carbon footprint, and it's just very hypocritical. That's the second reason I wanted to come to Davos, just to prove a point, really. To prove that you can still play a fine tune on an old fiddle, or something like that. So thank you once again for watching, and thank you for joining me on this journey. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below. And I'll be able to get back to you. Cheers, guys. See you next time.